few videos back, I did a review of the Yazelle 308, which I described as a handsome, classic looking, almost dress style watch for the same price as a cheeseburger. Today, we're looking at the Yazelle 369, its pretty looking sister. And despite its aesthetic upgrades, it hasn't increased in price. It's still the same price as a cheeseburger. So, let's have a look at this thing. Good day to you all and welcome to another BBW review. I'm very happy today to introduce the upgrade of the 308 and which to all intents and purposes um, is almost the same regarding the dimensions and the materials. The thing that is most noticeable is this beautiful new dial. So let's have a quick rundown of the dimensions. Uh, as in the 308, you have an alloy case, which here is a rose gold color. And this laser series only comes in a rose gold. It has a 48 millimeter lug to lug, and the dimensions of the dial are 40 millimeters, with a 20 millimeter lug width. You have a very tiny crown, I think probably the smallest crown I've ever seen on a watch, but it serves its purpose, so no problems there. Now right off the bat, and before I forget, I should mention about the strap. Uh, this is an aftermarket strap, which I've got to match the case and it does a really nice job of matching with the case. When you buy the watch you have this brown, it's quite a supple brown leather strap which I actually like but um, compared with the stainless steel bracelet uh, I think this looks much more classic looking. So enough about the strap. Uh, back to the case. The case itself is the same as the 308 48 millimeters lug to lug and it does curve nicely to the wrist. Again my wrist is a 6.5 inch and there are no gaps under the lugs when it's on the wrist. You have a small smooth bezel that meets a again a slightly domed crystal which is not sapphire for this price so there's not much information about this online but it has been described as a hard lex uh, but uh, again, I cannot confirm that. But it is exactly the same as the 308. Uh, the notable differences are the aesthetic ones on the face. Uh, as you can see, you have a beautiful textured dial. And unlike the 308, which had simple buttons markers on the hours, here, you have applied, also applied markers, but they are, I guess you'd call them arrow shaped. And below each marker, you have a number denoting each five minutes. At the 12 o'clock or below the 12 o'clock, you have an applied logo, Yazol, with the name printed below that. And above the six, you have what they call this their laser series, although the 308 was not in this series, even though it is the brother of this watch. And quartz. Now, I've been reliably told that the movement inside is a Miyota, but I couldn't verify that. Although if it's a Miyota or a plain Chinese movement, for me, I couldn't really tell the difference between them. It seems to work just fine on a time grapher, losing very few seconds a month. Um, as you can see, it does hit all the, the second hand does hit all the minute markers on the nose there. So no problem for people with that second hand OCD. Now back to the other aesthetic differences. Again, looking past that beautiful textured dial and the arrow-shaped 
markers for the hours. You have the hour and minute hands. Now the hour and the minute hands on the 308 was one of my small gripes with that watch. Namely, they were a bit too small for my liking. It seems that they've made the hands on this slightly larger. So the minute hand does reach the markers there, but the hour hand, slightly short, but I think it's better than before. And again, you get uh, slightly wider hands this time with more loom applied, but again, that loom, not really useful at all. The second hand has a rather large counterbalance with the Yazol logo on the end of there. And any other aesthetic differences? Not really. But let's just take a look at that. Again, that beautiful dial in different lighting effects. And this is what the watch looks like on the wrist. Let's have a quick wrist roll. Again, I shouldn't really show you this because you won't get this bracelet. But uh, for the price of another cheeseburger, you can have the same look. And uh, as a profile, it does fit very snugly to the wrist. Almost no gaps under the lugs there. Now one thing I keep on stressing is again, this is a $4 watch. But with this bracelet, it would cost about $8. But with the original brown strap, you can't really complain for the price of a cheeseburger. So comparing this to the 308, I think they both, they're both quite different, although they are almost identical in materials and build, and especially the case, the case design is exactly the same. Uh, I, both, I think they serve different purposes. This is obviously more of a dress style watch, where the 308 is more of a sports style. But, and again, they both cost the same. So that's about it, a quick review today, and I hope to see you again on BBW for another watch review. Thanks again for watching and take it easy.